Welcome back. Ben Oquist, David Gazar joining me to uh, rip through a few topics for this afternoon. Gentlemen, uh, thanks both for your time. Uh, Qatar, look, it's uh, such a difficult issue to talk about. Mm. Obviously, there's no blame on Australian officials. A pretty awkward moment for Scott Morrison when he spoke about this baby being dead. Well, it turns out it's not. Mm. That's the good news from this. But is there a bit of a tricky situation? Should this have been something the government was on the front foot about earlier? We don't know about maybe privacy concerns, I suppose. I, it, to me, it looks like they were on the front foot. Labor wanted the foreign minister to jump on the front foot straight away. And looking at this and the way it's unfolding today, there's a lot of conjecture about, you know, the facts that pertain to what's actually happened. So it, it seems to me before the foreign minister jumps in, you would want to have this investigated by our mission, by maybe our AFP who are operating there, and once the facts are ascertained, you then might get the foreign minister involved if it, if it needs to be eleva elevated up to a, a government level. Otherwise, that's why you have a, an ambassador. Yeah, you'd want all the support possible straight away yeah. for anyone <laughs> involved at all. Is it something to be cautious on in terms of, you know, accusations of the government's done the wrong thing or why wasn't a phone picked up at certain times and so on? Well, we, we don't know all the facts. That's true. But they are really serious allegations and you hope the government was onto it fast. I mean... Has the mother been found? All, all these things. Mm. It, 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 it doesn't bring up the issue, though, of um, mm. the treatment of women in Qatar, doesn't it? You know, you, yeah. can't, you can't get married there without permission of your guardian. You, can, you can't get divorced without permission of the court. Well, men can. There's no domestic violence laws. You can't travel overseas if you're single under 25. It's, it's a horrendous place for women. And you, you wonder if this might spark a bit more action on defence of women's rights in Qatar. Uh, but I, 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 I do want to know how quickly the government knew the allegations mm. and uh, sought, to, sought to act in the interest of these women on board and if that's going to spark a more general interest in women's rights in Qatar. I wonder what the DFAT site will be saying in the lead-up to the World Cup as well, of course. Mm. Um, look, I want to cast back uh, to Victoria. It was an interesting moment in Parliament. Labor was saying you haven't been speaking about Victorians enough and saying well done. The government, a pretty full-throated response, and, and, and certainly, you know, Josh Frydenberg able to speak from experience... But is it a bit dangerous when they're saying, hey, there's a failure on a lockdown, there's been a failure here in attacking the Victorian government? People there in Victoria, in Melbourne, might just want to move on from that for now? Yeah, although there's still an inquiry going on, isn't there, into why, you know... And that'll play out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this is still an ongoing um, debate and an ongoing inquiry set in train by the Victorian government themselves. I, I, you know, I... I, I feel for Josh Frydenberg in this. I feel for a lot of the, the Victorian MPs on, on either side, um, federal and state. I mean, they've just gone through this horrendous thing um, and, and I don't think you can, you can curb local members from speaking out about what they feel quite passionately about. And it was clear that the Treasurer yesterday felt very strongly about what he, what he, uh, what he was seeing and unfold. And, and he's going to be the one that has to clean up the economic damage that's occurred from this while everyone ran around sort of crack congratulating themselves and patting themselves well, on the bat about a, a job well done. I mean, indeed, it, when you say he, the federal cough is certainly taking a fair hit uh, because yeah, of Victoria yeah, yeah, as well. well. Josh's pocket, but his management of his portfolio. So, like, part of Labor's views seem to be this is a positive day. It was for a lot of people. Does it mean that every single federal parliamentarian needs to be positive about it? I mean, can't they be... And I, I know a lot of Melburnians were angry, mm. particularly the day before, but even leading up to this, saying at last, not so much well done, saying at bloody last. Mm. I thought it was quite a clever move of Albo to move that motion, kind of theoretically wedging uh, the government who ended up voting for it but using it to speak out against Victoria. and They spoke for longer in the end. The gov they seemed almost more prepared for their speeches. Though, uh, the look, and I think Josh is a Victorian senator, so he's got a bit more right to be speaking out. But there were those rumours that, you know, there was a bit of scuttlebutt amongst Victorian Liberals. They would be disappointed that Josh wasn't speaking out stronger and earlier. And I, 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 it felt like he's got a bit, a bit over the top mm. in his recent comments, which suggests to me a kind of slight overreaction. Well, I, I can tell you as well... Lots of Labor MPs are frustrated having to still just say, we support the Premier in Victoria, we support all Premiers. Mm. I, I, look, I think um, if the lockdown is successful and it is contained and we don't have a third wave, uh, in the end, uh, Victorians are going to be uh, a, a pleased with the result overall and they're going to compare themselves not just to other states, which is fair enough, but to what happened to other countries that couldn't get their second okay, wave. Yeah, and control. you have both. You have, wouldn't it be great if we didn't get into this and then maybe as a result... 
we're glad we didn't give it even worse into the mire. Victorians we'll, we'll aren't see. mugs, though, on this, right? And, and they know what they've just gone through and they're really happy to be out of it. There's no doubt about that. But to see um, the, the state being compared to the UK or Italy when really all you have to do is compare it to New South Wales and Queensland and Tasmania... And but can you, you do you... both? You can say, that was the era and the Victorian government was responsible for the era, but the clean-up, and if we look at this in six or 12 months, there's no vaccine and we're still in this position and others are doing that and they didn't I, lock down I, I, at 700... I, I think you've nailed it perfectly. You, you, the, and this is the great frustration. It's the era. Mm. And after 110 press conferences, someone tallied up that... Daniel Andrews had literally spoken, had been on his feet for over a month of his working life. We still have no more clarity about where right. the error lay as, 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 as responsibility of the Victorian government that we did before. We were truncated today. That was my error, and I'll admit to that. Ben, David, good to have your company. Talk Thanks. again soon. Thanks, Tom. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. Wages are growing at their slowest sustained pace. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.